Hi, my name is Amy and during these quarantine times I thought it'd be a great time to make a video to teach you everything you need to know on how to clipper your long-haired rabbit in the kindest and most gentle way. I'm going to have some help with my friend Fiverr here and a little bit later on a real live rabbit named Magnus. So a little bit about me. I've been living with house rabbits since 2001 and I've been volunteering with various rabbit rescue organizations since 2002. In total, I've had five Angora rabbits, two of whom live with me right now. One thing I want to note is that I do not have experience handling Angoras who have come into rescue very badly matted and felted. So this video is only about clippering a rabbit who's already in fairly good condition and how you can maintain their coat in that good condition. And I'd like to share my experience on grooming long-haired rabbits, again, in a kind, compassionate and loving way. Right, Fiverr? That's right. Why keep your long-haired rabbit in a short haircut? It reduces the amount of fur they will lick and ingest. Less fur in the stomach helps avoid some serious gut problems. It allows the rabbit greater range of motion, which means they can be more athletic and active, as rabbits naturally are. Exercise improves their quality of life. It also keeps them feeling cooler and more comfortable. Feeling cooler allows rabbits to move around more and be more active too. So unlike my friend Fiverr here, who is clearly a Dutch puppet rabbit, long-haired rabbits form mats very quickly. And what that means is you have to comb them several times a week or you have to keep them clippered short. The texture and density of fur differs from rabbit to rabbit. Some long-haired rabbits have very thick, woolly fur. Some have fine and silky fur. The rabbits who have thick, woolly coats are difficult to comb and their fur mats very quickly. So these rabbits should be clippered short approximately every 45 days. The parts of their body where a rabbit has the most movement are the areas that get the most mats. These are high friction areas, under their chin and on their chest, on the nape of the neck, at the back of their head, on their feet and around their legs. Rabbits who have fine, silky fur are easier to maintain. So with rabbits with fur like that, you can choose to maintain them with just regular combing and brushing you might want to clipper them for their own comfort during the summer months. In between haircuts, you still need to comb the furry parts of your rabbit or those parts will get badly matted. So comb at the nape of the neck and the back of the head. Comb around their pelvic region. Comb the fur around their feet. And don't forget, comb their tail. If you have a veterinarian who's experienced with rabbits and sees a lot of rabbits in their office, I recommend that you make an appointment at your veterinarian to have them show you hands-on the positions for holding your rabbit when you clipper. That is how I learned and I recommend that you do the same. Using a clipper on a rabbit requires two people. You cannot do this with one person. They don't do it with one person at the vet's office. One person holds the clipper and one person restrains the rabbit and keeps them from moving around so they don't get hurt. Now the clipper I use is the same as the clipper my vet uses and it's this one. It's called the Oster Golden A5. It's a two speed corded clipper. It looks like this. It claims to have a silent motor. Don't believe that. This motor is not silent. You want to run it around your rabbits before you ever put it near them so they get used to the sound of this thing. Um, but it's corded so it has a lot of power and it fits pretty well in your hand. It's slightly heavy um, for a clipper. That's because it has a lot of power. Your right or left-handedness will make some areas easier to clipper and other areas more difficult. Don't worry, you will get better with practice, I promise. 
So let's talk about blade handling. I'm gonna put Fiverr in a more rabbit natural position here. And the first thing that you want to know and need to know about holding the clipper is that you are always going to be holding the blade of the clipper parallel to your rabbit's skin. So whether I'm going down the back or whether I'm going along the side, this blade is always running parallel to the skin of the rabbit. You never angle downwards like this. Never do this. Always parallel. That's the first most important thing. 98% of the time, you will be moving your blade with the grain of the fur, the direction that the fur is growing, which on a rabbit is it's going this direction. You don't really wanna be going against the grain like this. Only move against the grain or across the grain if you just can't get at that area any other way. So 98% of the time with the grain. Another thing to know is that blades get very hot. So at least every five minutes, you are gonna want to put this blade against your own skin. You wanna put it someplace where you can feel how hot it really is, how it feels next to your rabbit's skin. If it's getting too warm, you gotta stop. You can switch blades or you can take a break and cool the blade, but don't keep going if it's hot because that blade is running right against your rabbit's skin. Um, the other thing is blades get dull. They get dull fairly quickly, like after maybe like three, four uses. So you need to find a local sharpener. I use my sharpener multiple times a year and you're gonna regularly use their services too. So find a sharpener and make sure that you're getting your blade sharpened probably every, say like three, four, five uses. That's how often you're gonna need the blade sharpened. Let's set up the workspace. So you'll want to find a table that has the right height for you so that you're not straining your back or uncomfortable as you're doing the clippering. I have a folding work table and it is extended at its full height extension so that the tabletop hits me at about my waist height. Then I add to that padding the top of the work surface. So first I get a nice thick fleece and I put that down. I also have a garden kneeling pad that I put at the end. That's for my partner to put his elbows on so that when he's holding the bunny, his elbows aren't cutting directly into the wood of the tabletop. The next thing, I just have a regular old towel here and I put that over. This gives my bunny some extra traction and adds a little bit of additional padding to the work surface. Lastly, get a smaller fleece like this one and what you want to do is roll it up into a bolster. This bolster is going to help support the bunny in two different positions for clippering and so you want to make a little bolster like that. Then you are ready with your workspace. Rabbit handling. So you will have your rabbit in three basic positions to clipper. The first position is just their natural loaf position. It's not very natural for Fiverr, but your bunny will be in this position very naturally. So this is the first position, just a bunny loaf. The second position, we are going to use this bolster that you made. So the person who's holding the rabbit will use their body, their torso, and this bolster. Use the palm of the hand to cradle the bunny's bottom and the bunny's back will go against this bolster, their head goes against your torso, and they are going to hold the bunny like this so that you can clipper the exposed part, which is basically their belly and their pelvic region. So this is the second position. The third position also makes use of this bolster. So the person who's helping you will set up the bolster like this, and then the bunny's belly will go over the bolster, so the bolster is partially supporting them. Then the person will take their two index fingers, make a triangle that goes underneath the bunny's chin to tilt it up, 
their other fingers will control your bunny's front legs so that they can't thrash around. And if it's, in, if it's good for the other person, if they're in the right position, they can also use their torso to kind of keep your bunny from kicking away. So then you can clipper this exposed part of their chest and under their chin. So this is the last position your bunny will be in. Here's an important part to know about handling your rabbit while you're clippering. On a short-haired rabbit like Fiverr, it's very easy at all times to see where the tail is because it's always exposed. But with a long-haired rabbit, sometimes their fur has grown all around their tail and so it's kind of hard to see what exactly is just fur and what exactly is tail. So when you are clippering your rabbit, I want you, when you're in this area along their back and their hindquarters, I want you to use your free hand and find the tail and cover up the tail with your hand so that your clippering is going to look like this. I've got the tail covered and I'm clippering. I'm clippering all along the hindquarters and there's no chance of me of cutting the tail. I always know where the tail is because my hand is covering it. This is something my vet brought up to me and I wanna share it with you because she's actually seen injuries from people who did not locate the tail and started clippering. So be very aware, where is the tail and protect the tail with your hand. Under the rabbit's front legs, they have a web of skin. This is an area that could be easy to cut. So I'd advise that you be extremely careful in this area under their front arms, okay? I generally tend to not really get close to this area or cut in this area. Also, another delicate area is their pelvic region. You want to just go slowly and be very careful. Don't cut too close. You can actually do this area by supplementing your clipper work with a little comb, like this is a little flea comb. You can supplement by just pulling through in this area without using the clipper, get it nice and free flowing, and then just clipper off the very tips of the fur. But don't try to get close in this area unless you're very, very experienced. Um, lastly, rabbits who have a dewlap have a lot of loose skin and other, some other rabbits have loose skin over their shoulders or other areas like their belly. The way to deal with loose skin is that you use your free hand. So let's say this rabbit, let's say this rabbit has some loose skin on their side. I'm going to use my free hand to pull that skin taut, nice and taut, while the other hand clippers. Pulling skin taut keeps you from cutting wrinkled or loose skin. So just remember that your free hand pulls something nice and tight so then you can clipper it without being afraid that you're going to catch a wrinkle or something like that. So just proceed with caution in those, in those loose, wrinkly areas. So. Very important to give breaks during this process. I work for about 10 or 15 minutes and then I give my rabbit a 15 minute break. The other bonus for giving breaks is that it gives you a chance to pop off your blade and cool it down, clean it off, put it in your refrigerator, put it in your freezer. And then after 15 minutes, your bunny's had a little bit of time to cool down and de-stress, put it back on, it's nice and cold, you're ready to go again. Um, also, don't, don't forget a very important part. When you take a break, give your rabbit a treat because then they know, hey, I endured this thing that I don't enjoy, but I'm gonna get a treat every time they give me a break and that makes it a little bit better. <laughs> um, that's, that's important part, thank you. So this is Magnus, and he is a rescue rabbit from Ohio House Rabbit Rescue. And his fur, he is way overdue for a clippering. I usually clipper him every 50 days. We're at about 65 days right now. And so you can see he's, he's got about, I don't know, two inches, two and a half inches. He can grow much, much more than that, but we are not gonna give him that opportunity. So here you see we are going to begin, I like to just begin in the center and work my way from there.
Now here, watch me take my hand and stretch his skin so I can get a nice close shave by stretching it out. Okay, we're gonna give Magnus a break. I find this area too curvy to clip her closely. Magnus also grows super dense woolly fur here, so I use combs and a small scissors to remove this fur. When using a scissors, always identify where your rabbit's skin is. If you don't know where their skin starts, don't start cutting until you do.
Okay, here's some last thoughts. Don't be in a hurry. Be gentle with yourself and with your rabbit. Go slowly and use caution and practice by doing. Each time that you clipper, your technique, your speed, and your confidence will improve. Lastly, good luck. <laughs>